Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 3130, uh, Modern Geometries for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misalign. In this lecture 12, um, we're going to introduce the idea of what an angle means um, in an ordered geometry. So while incidence geometry was, was too coarse to be able to give us notions like angles and triangles and things like that, betweenness exactly gives us what we need. Because we have things like plane separation, we can talk about what it means to be inside of a triangle or outside of a triangle. And ultimately, uh, this is going to derive from our notion of an angle, which we're going to define uh, just right now. So consider three um, distinct non-collinear points in an ordered geometry. Then we can define the angle denoted as angle ABC by the following formula. The angle ABC is the intersection of the two half planes. It'll be the intersection of the half plane determined by the line AB and the point C with the half plane determined by the line BC uh, on the side of A. So I want to draw a picture here to try to illustrate what's going on here. So we have our three points, right? So maybe something like this is what we're thinking. So we have our point A, we have our point B, and we have our point C, okay? And so then I want us to consider the ray um, from B to A and consider the ray from B to C. So we know there, of course, there's a line determined by these things. But when we think of the angle, we're really thinking of the these two rays, but we also have everything inside the angle. I'll make some, I'll be more explicit about that in just a moment. So uh, the first part, you take the line AB, that of course is this line right here, and then take, there's two sides of the line that we've determined previously. Take the side that contains the point C. So we're taking this side of the line right here, but then also consider the line BC, right? And it has two sides. There's this one and this one. And we want the side of the line that has the point A. So that's going to be this side of the line right here. Well, if we take the intersection of those two things, then the intersection of those half planes would be this area right here. And that gives us the so-called angle. Now, I want to caution us that even though we've defined angles here, we don't have anything about like angle measure. We can't talk about degrees. We can't talk about radians. We don't have things like distance and measure yet. That's something we'll develop later on in our lecture series, but at least at this moment we can talk about angles. So angles by definition are going to be the intersection of two half planes. In particular, they will contain the two rays that um, bound it. So you have your initial side right here. That is part of the angle. You have your terminal side up over here. That's also part of the angle. Then we have all the things that are between um, those two rays. And so that is what we define here as the angle. Now we can talk about the interior of an angle. The interior of an angle, which will be denoted um, the angle symbol, then we're going to draw a little circle here. This is sort of a topological uh, notation here, uh, describing an open set here because uh, we're no longer including the boundaries. Um, so the the interior of the angle, or sometimes called the open angle, this will be the intersection of the open half planes. So remember, what's the difference between the half plane AB with, with, with respect to the point C and then the open half plane, so this is the closed half plane? The closed half plane um, contains the boundary line itself, while the open half plane doesn't contain the line. So that's the difference there. Um, same thing here. So when you look at the when you when you look at the open angle, the interior of the angle, you don't get the rays BA or BC, but you do get everything that's else is there. So that's the interior of the angle. Um, there are two special cases that we need to define right now. Um, there's the example we call a half angle. Excuse me, a flat angle. A flat angle is actually just a closed half plane. Um, and that's because when we defined an angle above, we said that the points A, B, and C were not collinear. Well, if A, B, and C are collinear, there's a couple possibilities. You have that B is between A and C. Um, and so it's basically like you have this ray and you have this ray with B between them. These are what we call opposite rays. We're going to talk more about those in this video. Well, not this video, but in this lecture, lecture 12 here. Um, so you have this, you have this half angle. Uh, excuse me, this half plane. A half plane is what we call a flat angle. In the future, this is what would coincide with a 180 degree angle. But again, we don't have measure yet, but that's why I want you to think of it. This, this flat angle is just um, a half plane. Some people call these straight angles. 
Um, that's a possibility. Now be aware that when you have a, ha a flat angle, you're choosing a side. You're not both of them simultaneously. You only have one of them, like so. Um, you also have the notion of a null angle. A null angle happens when the ray BA coincides with the ray BC, right? So they're both on the same side going on right here. Uh, this is what we would normally think of as a zero degree angle, but again, this this is a this is sort of like a degenerate angle, much like a flat angle is as well, because the points A, B, and C are in fact collinear. Um, this happens when you have the relationship that A is between B and C, or you have the relationship where C is between uh, B and A. And all of these situations, you know, in flat angles and null angles, as the name suggests, they, we are going to call them angles, but they're not angles proper. We have to always treat them exceptionally here. But when we talk about an angle, whether it's a genuine angle or one of these degenerate angles, um, this point B is somewhat more important than the other ones. It's often referred to as the vertex of the angle. Um, and that's because it's the intersection of the two rays, BA and BC, that really are the boundary for this angle. And so with this definition of angle out of the way, we'll then proceed to prove some things about angles um, in order geometry.